Hello friends and welcome back to VHB tutorials. So in previous videos we have completed the what is element, what is node, we have derived the elemental stiffness matrix also and we have seen all the concepts uh, related to element, how to solve the sums, how to place the nodes, the rules for nodes. So till now we have completed our almost introductory theory so what we will do we will today solve this sum related to that theories so that what will happen we can understand the importance of that theories right and you will easily uh, you can grab easily the uh, importance of that theory and how to solve the sums right so today we will solve an sum in which we have to find three unknown values that is first is displacement of nodes second is the stress and strain in the each of the sections and third is the reaction forces but as of now we have only just completed the um, how to find the displacement of nodes so we will calculate the displacement of nodes uh, in this video and when we will complete the theories of stresses and strain and reaction forces then we will again move towards this sum and again we will try to solve the stresses and reaction forces for this sum only right so please watch this video till the end because in between there are a lot of complex calculations so please observe this video till the end and if you have any doubts then please ask me in the comment section and now without any further delay let's get started so now we will start our sum right so this problem is asked in the gdu in the year 2013 so what is the problem an axial step bar as shown in the figure is subjected to an axial pull of 50 kilo newton if the material of the bar is uniform and has modulus of elasticity 200 gigapascal determine the displacement stress and the reaction means in this question we have three unknown quantities means we have to find three unknown quantities for this problem but we have only discussed about how to find the displacement so no problem we will find the displacement first and then we will uh, start the theory of uh, the other two unknowns that is stresses and reaction and then after we will solve the sum uh, we will solve this sum again right so we will solve the sum for just displacement here so i hope you know the uh, concept of nodes elements and uh, how to place the node and element connectivity table so if you don't know that concepts then please go and see the uh, videos which i have updated in the playlist so you can go and check that videos i will also provide the link in the description corner also so please click on that so you can see the playlist of fea so first what we will do so i will explain you how to solve this type of sums first decide which type of structure it is so structure here it is a step bar so we will consider what bar element so here we have a structure of bar right so we will take element as bar element so this is our first step we will take bar element now we will draw the fea model of this structure so how many nodes will be there in this question yes now how to discretize this step bar so you can see where the cross section changes we have to put the nodes so here we will have one two and three elements and nodes will be one two three and four nodes so this is discussed in the previous video so i hope you know these things now i will draw the model of fea so this is our fixed structure right so this is our first node then second node then third node and fourth node or let's say i will draw the structure here so see here i am drawing the structure just beneath of this only so this is the first node second node then third node and the last node fourth so how many elements are there this is first second and third three elements four nodes so one two three four now i hope you know the length these are the lengths of this elements and these are the cross sectional area of this elements which are given in the equation this is the 50 kilo newton force is applied here right this is the force 50 kilo newton now all of you know that what will happen when we apply the force in this direction so obviously these nodes will displace in this direction so the nodes will displace in this direction perfect yeah so we have completed the model also now what we will do so now we will 
find the elemental stiffness matrix for each of the elements because we have the area then we have the Young's modulus and it is written that uh, the material of the bar is uniform so we have area Young's modulus and length of each of the element so easily we can find the elemental stiffness matrix so what is the formula for elemental stiffness matrix it is k equals to a e upon l 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so this is also derived in the previous videos so i hope you have watched that video so uh, if you have not then don't worry i will uh, keep this video somewhere here in the top right corner so we will find the elemental stiffness matrix of first element then second and then third right so let's say k1 is what a1 e will be same for all the elements upon l1 into 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 we are just finding the displacement only because we know the theory of displacement the stress and the reaction force we will we will find in the upcoming videos so don't worry so what is k1 uh, area 1 is 300 mm square so 300 this is a1 of the element number 1 a2 element number 2 and a3 element number 3 now what is this modulus of elasticity is 200 gigapascal so i hope you know what is giga what is mega so giga is 10 raised to 9 so we will write 200 into 10 raised to 9 pascal is newton per meter square but we have to bring in mm so what we will do we will convert here so we will write mm square and 10 raised to 10 raised to what 10 raised to 6 because 10 raised to 3 the whole square 10 raised to 3 the whole square because 1 meter equals to 10 raised to 3 mm right so now what will happen uh, we will get e equals to 2 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square so please check it out that you have got this step or not this 200 into 10 raised to 9 minus 6 3 and this two uh, this two zeros will be added so 2 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square so i will write here 2 into 10 raised to 5 upon what is length length is 200 mm now this as it is 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 right so keep one thing in mind what that we have to keep one common term in all three uh, elemental stiffness matrix means uh, we will keep this common term in here here and here means see how i am keeping the common term see this is k1 3 2 this will be cancelled this two cancel so what we are getting 3 into 10 raised to 5 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so we will keep this 10 raised to 5 out and 3 we will multiply so you have to keep one common term and rest of the terms will be multiplied in this elemental stiffness uh, in this matrix so this is our equation number one this we, uh, same way we will find the elemental stiffness matrix for element 2 and element 3 so similarly i have uh, written the other two elemental stiffness matrix see note this is not k square this is not k cube right this is the representation that this is the elemental stiffness matrix of second element and this is the elemental stiffness matrix of third element right so i was talking about that we have to keep one common term and this is the important that in all the three matrix we will have one common term and that we have to select and bring uh, means we have to keep out of this matrix and the rest of the terms we will multiply in the matrix right so we are uh, done with finding the elemental stiffness matrix now what the next part so the next part is framing the equation or let us say now first we will find the global stiffness matrix and then after we will put all the values in our equation our famous equation that f equals to k into displacement here we will consider q as our displacement or u you can consider any so in this equation we have to put the global values means the uh, the value of f is uh, kept here uh, will be kept here for whole component for k also we have to put the global value means for whole component and for q also we have to put the whole value don't worry just observe you will understand now we are missing with one table that is element node connectivity table so no problem we will draw here so this is our element column and this is the node column right this is important for framing the global stiffness matrix so we have three elements element one element two element three uh, so element one is connected with two nodes so one two 
similarly element 2 with 2 and 3 and similarly for 3 is 3 and 4 right now what about element uh, global stiffness matrix so what will be the order for global stiffness matrix so i hope you know the uh, method to find the order for global stiffness matrix so no problem i will show if you don't know that so order of global stiffness matrix i am writing global and you global as g and s as global stiffness matrix right i am not writing whole this is order of global stiffness matrix so it is total number of nodes into degree of freedom of each node right so how many nodes are here we have one two three and four nodes so no problem four into now what about degree of freedom of each node so here we know that we are applying the force in this direction so this node can either be displaced in this direction or in this direction provided that if you have if we are applying force in uh, this direction that is negative x so this node have a uh, capability of moving either in this or in this that means this node can move only in one direction that is along positive x or along negative x so in bar element we will always have degree of freedom equals to one so into one so we are getting what four and our element uh, our global stiffness matrix will be always square matrix so square matrix order will be what four cross four so our global stiffness matrix will have order 4 cross 4. Now how to frame this global stiffness matrix? Just observe me. See, now let us move towards our element node connectivity table. So see, this first element is connected with how many nodes? This one and two nodes. So we will write for first element here 1, 2, 1, 2, right? You can write this number with pencil. And after that you can rub it also or keep it as it is, no problem. And uh, this is the second element. So how many nodes are here? 2, 3, 2, 3, right? If we have to write in this pattern. And the third element is connected with 3, 4 and 3, 4, right? Now, we know the global stiffness matrix, the order of global stiffness matrix is what? Is 4 cross 4. So, no problem. Uh, we will write 4 cross 4. So, this is 4 cross 4. Four. So, how many elements are here? Three elements and how many nodes? Four nodes. So, one, two, three and four. So, we will write one, two, three, four. Similarly, here also one, two, three and four. Now, this is an important step. So, please observe me carefully that uh, in which way I am putting the values of this matrices because this global stiffness matrix is the combination of these three matrices in uh, so just observe me now here this first row and first column what is the element 3 first row first column have 3 and don't forget to put this common term out right uh, just I was missing and uh, don't forget to put this common term so in the first row and first column we have 3 so first row I mean first column and first row so 3 what about this second column first row it is minus 3 so minus 3 what about this first column and second row again minus 3 and second row second column it is 3 right so we have placed our first element of stiffness matrix in our global stiffness matrix now we will move towards second second element of stiffness matrix so in the second we have second row a uh, second column and second row so second column second row we have one second column second row so here already we have kept 3 so no problem we will just add plus 1 because here we have to keep 1 in second row and second column. Now what about third row, uh, third column and second row. So third column second row uh, it is empty so we will just put minus 1. Now second column third row second column third row again minus 1 right. Now third column third row third column third row it is 1. Okay, so we have completed our second also, second element of stiffness also. Now we will move towards next, the third and the last. So, third column, third row, it is 0.6. So check, third column, third row, already we have one. So just we will add 0.6 here. Now, this fourth column, third row, fourth column, third row, we have minus 0.6. Fourth column, third row, okay, we will write minus 0.6. 
6. Now, this third column and fourth row. This third column, fourth row. Third column and fourth row, we have minus 0 0.6. So, minus 0 0.6. Now, what about fourth column and fourth row? It is 0 0.6. Fourth column, fourth row, 0.6. Right? So, I hope I am correct and please check whether I am correct or not. I hope I am correct and now the places which are empty at that places we will keep 0. So 0, 0 here, 0 here or let's say I use a different pen color so that we can differentiate. So 0, 0 then here also 0 again here and here. Right? So we have completed our elemental, our global stiffness matrix. Now again, uh, it is not uh, the uh, the original meaning of keeping this elemental stiffness matrix values in global stiffness matrix is different. It is not like that we have to uh, write this number and just we have to keep. This is a trick that uh, by which we can put the elements easily in our global stiffness matrix. But the original meaning, uh, original meaning behind this is different. So if I will get time, then I will. Uh, try to explain you what is the original meaning but for now this is our trick and by using this trick only you can solve these sums in examination right so uh, now if we want to check then how we can check but before that let's write this perfectly so 3 plus 1 it is 4 it is minus 1 1 plus 0. 0.6 it is 1.6 then it is minus 0. 0.6 and minus 3 right so how to check so just keep this pen uh, this is the diagonal ele elements and surround this diagonal elements the elements should be same so observe this uh, let us mark or this is our diagonal element uh, diagonal elements so surrounding these elements we will have uh, similar elements that is minus 3 minus 3 then we will have uh, minus 1 minus 1 then 0 0 then minus 0. 0.6 minus 0. 0.6 so if you get this type of elemental st uh, global stiffness matrix then you are correct so check this that uh, we have same numbers or not now what about the global displacement matrix so global displacement matrix means what the matrix of the displacement of these nodes so nodes will displace right so for that we can write uh, let's write here so it will be the column matrix i hope you know that why it is column matrix this this also it is discussed in the previous video so it is what it is global displacement matrix q1 and q2 are the displacement okay we have how many nodes four nodes so here we will have q1 q2 q3 and q4 right so bear in mind So Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4, these are the nodal displacements. Now what about the force? So no problem, we will write force matrix also. So here we will have F1, F2, F3 and F4. Why, why 4? Because here we have 4 nodes. So on that nodes, 4 forces will act. So we have to write 4 forces in a column matrix. Now why it is column matrix that we know? okay so this is global force matrix now we obtained all the global matrices of our unknown equation that uh, this is our main equation that for which we are struggling this is f is equals to k into displacement or deflection so here we have to keep the global value again here global and also global so this force here we will have global force matrix here we will have global stiffness matrix and here we will have global displacement matrix for nodes because we have to find the displacement for nodes only right so i have to rub this part see i am writing the equation so f is equals to k into q right this represents that we have a column matrix this represents we have a square matrix and this curly braces again represents column matrix right so we, we will put this as our global force matrix so we know that f1 f2 f3 and f4 is equals to what about this we, we have to keep this whole equation and don't forget to write this common term 10 raised to 5 so here we have 3 minus 3 0 0 minus 3 4 
माइनस वन जीरो जीरो माइनस वन वन पॉइंट सिक्स माइनस पॉइंट सिक्स जीरो जीरो माइनस पॉइंट सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स राइट नाउ वी आर लेफ्ट विथ दिस सो दिस ऑल्सो ए कॉलम मैट्रिक्स क्यू वन क्यू टू क्यू थ्री एंड क्यू फोर सो दिस इज फोर क्रॉस फोर दिस इज वॉट फोर क्रॉस वन दिस इज ऑल्सो फोर क्रॉस वन so i hope you know that why we are getting this 4 cross 1 matrix in the left hand side so if you will multiply these two matrices then you will get 4 cross 1 matrix right now what we have to find we have to find this displacement but now uh, an important step will come that placing the boundary conditions so just observe me that how i am placing the boundary conditions see q1 is what q1 is the displacement of node 1 and q2 is displacement of node through a uh, node 2 and similarly for node 3 and node 4 now observe that where q1 is q1 is at the fixed end so you know that it is fixed so if you are applying force then there will be no deflection in this fixed node so we know that q1 is zero now what about q2 q2 is somewhere here q1 is here q3 is here and q4 is here now what about q4 i mean what about q2 yes there will be some deflection so we will keep q2 as it is now what about q3 yes there will be some deflection and also about q4 there will be some deflection so we don't know about this q2 q3 and q4 so no problem we will keep q2 q3 and q4 as it is but we know about q1 so what we will do we will put zero so as we know Uh, the displacement of q1 so there is no need to solve for q1 so what we will do we will cancel this first row and first column from stiffness matrix global stiffness matrix now this is known as what this is known as elimination approach elimination approach so here we have two approaches elimination and penalty approach so in examination if you are not mentioned to find uh means how to find the displacements then use this elimination approach only don't go for penalty approach if you will go for penalty approach then you have to end up in the hospital why because it is so lengthy and so complicated so please go for elimination approach only so i will explain again that what is elimination approach so if uh, we know the displacements for any of the nodes or any two nodes or any three nodes then the, no problem we will just put the values of that uh, known values i means we will put the <coughs> displacement for that known node values and what we will do we will cancel the column and corresponding row for that known values of the node this is known as elimination approach so here we know that q1 is zero so we are cancelling first row and first column from this global stiffness matrix so it is not necessary that you should have zero only to cancel out uh, there can be any of value it can be 5 mm also it can be 3 mm also but it is provided that you should know the displacement of that particular node then only you can cancel the corresponding row and corresponding column so this is known as elimination approach so now we are left with what this part only so we will write that part so what we have we have here f2 f3 and f4 so we are left with 3 cross 1 which is equals to what again 3 cross 3 cross 3 matrix so it is 4 minus 1 0 minus 1 1.6 minus 0.6 0 minus 0.6 0.6 and here we have q2 q3 and q4 now what we have to just solve and uh, we know the value for f4 that is 50 kN because it is the force at what at node 4 and node 4 we know that the force is applied that is 50 kN so what we will do we will just solve these things so f2 and f3 are what is equals to we have to multiply so i hope you know the multiplication of the matrices now we know the value of force at node 4 but what about this f2 and f3 as it is not mentioned that there is no force at f2 and f3 so we will simply keep zero here as it is not mentioned that at node 4 uh, as node 2 and at node 3 what is the force so no problem we will just keep zero so this is the multiplied matrix of this both now what we will do we will just equate it because the orders are same that is 3 cross 1 and 3 cross 1 so 
q2 minus q3 is what equals to 0 then it is minus q2 plus 1.6 q3 minus 0.6 q4 is equals to 0 and minus 0.6 q3 plus 0.6 q4 is equals to 50 into 10 raised to 3. So now after solving this 1, 2 and 3 equations you will get q2 as 0.167 mm, q3 as 0.67 mm and q4 as 1.50 mm. So if you are getting 0.1 6, 8 or something uh, nearer to these answers then it is okay, it is right. Means what we will do, uh, we will bring either Q2 or Q3 in terms of Q2 and then keep uh, then pu uh, putting the values of Q2 in this equation. So whole equations will be converted into Q3 and Q4. So now after converting this, to, uh, this equation in Q3 and Q4, uh, then after we will add these two equations and you will get Q2, uh, you will get Q3 and Q4 and similarly you will get Q2 also. Now if you don't know how to solve this equation then please comment me down then I will uh, solve this equation into uh, in upcoming videos right. So just try to solve if you are not getting then no problem I will solve in the next up, uh, upcoming video. So these are the answers so it is not completed because in the equation it is asked to find stresses and reaction force also but as we have completed our theory for finding the displacement so we will uh, keep a pause here and when we will discuss the stresses and how to find the reaction then we will again uh, come back to this equation uh, come back to this problem and we will solve right so just note this down and keep this sum with you because it will be needed in the future lectures right so that's it if you have any doubt then please ask me in the comment section and please don't forget to hit the like button if you have found this video helpful and please make sure that you uh, share this video as much as you can share right so please subscribe to my channel and till then have a good day and bye bye